Let's turn to the election. We're just six days away from November 3rd, and much of the attention from the two candidates has been on the swing states. It makes sense. Rick Newman, President Trump has rolled out a number of policies or orders, I guess you could say, in an effort to really target the swing states and to get more votes. Do you think his efforts are registering with the voters? Do you think it's actually going to move the needle at all? He's trying. Uh, the one that caught my eye most recently uh, was news that the White House is considering some kind of executive order to uh, express support for fracking. Um, why could Trump be doing that uh, just a few days before the election? Obviously, to gin up some uh, late uh, last minute support and perhaps some votes in states that have fracking that happen to be uh, battleground states like Pennsylvania and Ohio and even Texas. Uh, last week, he said he was going to get um, pensions restored for some auto workers um, who lost their pensions going all the way back to uh, 2009 or had their pensions cut, rather. Um, that was during the automotive bailout. Um, guess where those uh, people tend to be located? Ohio, another swing state. Uh, we know Trump has um, said he's going to send out these $200 uh, voucher cards to Medicare uh, recipients to help them lower their drug costs. Uh, he's out there tweeting and telling everybody at rallies, reminding people that he has given $28 billion to farmers. That is basically bailout money to account for losses they've incurred on account of his uh, his tariffs. And then, of course, he's promising tax cuts uh, for everybody, but only if he gets reelected. Uh, everybody should know that Trump also promised a new round of tax cuts before, right before the 2018 midterms, and those did not materialize. Rick, it sounds like you're suggesting that President Trump's trying to buy votes here. <laughs> we'll just leave that aside. How, but how, seriously, how typical or atypical is this? I mean, do presidents do this? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they do. But I, I don't think they're quite as blatant as, as Trump. And that fits with the, the way Trump operates. But I mean, typically, you might see a bigger policy push, let's say, earlier in an election year uh, mm -hmm. to maybe have some kind of tax cut uh, or something that can make voters feel good. Or you, you're sure that if you did something that ended up fattening voters' wallets, you make sure you remind them of it um, while you're running. I mean, I don't, I, I don't think it's normal that you've got this sort of laundry list of little things you're saying you'll do um, if you if you get reelected. I'll, I'll just I'll just give you one other example. So Trump has said he's all of a, you know, he didn't pursue it to any of these things during most of his first four years. But all of a sudden in September, he said he backs this program to um, support and boost black enterprise zones. And he actually said at a speech in Georgia, if you vote Republican over the next four years, we will create three million jobs for the black community. So I mean, the way he phrases that makes it sound like, but if you don't vote Republican, you're not getting any job. So, yeah, I think this is pretty blatant. Hey, Rick, I'm happy you brought that up because I wanted to ask you about that just in terms of if there was a plan beyond what he said to actually create those three million jobs that he is promising for the black community. But we'll get to that another time since we're a little running a little bit short on time.